I um I want to slowly wrap up. And yes, the um book was that book called Grit. Yes, it's called Grit by Angela Duckworth. Excellent read or excellent listen on Audible. Um, I want to share with you, though, in my terrifying longing, how I act and how I up my game, um, how I'm responsible steward. And I am not always I'm not saying I have this down perfectly, but I want to share with you what I'm learning. Because as I'm learning this, as I'm learning to steward the gifts that I believe I've been given, as I'm learning to steward my preparation and getting to my terrifying longing, I am fulfilled in ways that I never thought I could be. I'm serving in ways. I have opportunities like this to share with you guys in ways to inspire other people to identify that for themselves. These things that I could never do authentically had I not experienced, experienced it for myself. So I want to underscore <clears throat> in your direction towards your terrifying longing, you must act. You must find one thing to act upon each day, every day that is going to honor that terrifying longing in you. So my terrifying longing is to inspire people to change the way they think. Here's how I'm acting on that in 2022. I have another kind of terrifying longing goal <laughs> that I've established. And that is to, by the end of 2022, to have a publishing contract for my next book. Um, this is a big, hairy, audacious goal, right? I mean, it's big, like 99% of people get turned down. <laughs> this is a big goal. I've published books. I coach people to publish books. They've all been self-published. But this one, I feel like for it to accomplish that which I believe it needs to accomplish, I believe I need to have um, the representation of a publishing house. So that's my goal for this year. That doesn't just happen by showing up and writing a book. I'm not even that great of a writer, honestly. What I am is a great messenger. I'm a great messenger of sharing the knowledge that I have learned for myself, that I've learned to apply with diligence and how that's worked for me. So what do I do? What do I act on? How do I act? How do I answer those what ifs? What if I fail? What if I fail? What if I don't get a publishing contract? What if I tell all these, all these people and then I don't get it? I'm telling all of you guys, what if, what if? I tell you, and I don't get it. That's okay because I'm acting on it. And right now, here's how I'm acting. I do two things every day. The first thing I do is I write. Ta -da! You know, you want to write a book, you want to get a publishing contract, you write, right? You got to write to write the book. So I write. Sometimes it stinks. Sometimes it's, eh, it's decent. Then I come back to it. I leave it, come back to it, look at it again. I write, I write, I write. I write. And as I write, it's reminding me of areas of the book that I need to incorporate. It's reminding me of areas of the book that I thought I needed to incorporate that I don't. You see, I am refining those points. I am not just operating under the assumption that I'm naturally gifted and I'm meant to, I'm deserving of getting this book publication contract. No, I'm not. I am required to put the discipline of work, of effort in. The second thing that I do is I read. I read. I read best-selling authors. I read people have, who have been picked up by publishers. I read all, everything in my genre. I read the people who I'm competing against, who my message is competing against. I read people who I disagree with, who flat out make me frustrated and angry to read. Why? Because they're published and I'm not. I'm surrounding myself with educators. I'm surrounding myself with a pool of people, of examples of forerunners, because I don't know it all. I'm surrounding myself with being a part of a writing community, of doing online courses, of workshops, doing what I need to do to sharpen that craft, to sharpen my message, to make it likely that I'm going to make my way across that tightrope. Because if I don't do those things, I'm not going to, I can guarantee my failure. So I am acting and that's what I'm doing every day. So here's what I wanna ask you. If a piece of your terrifying longing, I hope I knew, if not, I'd love to chat with you offline. If a piece of that has been revealed to you, reminded to you of what your desire is to do, what's your purpose, that which only you can fulfill. 
what that is, what that terrifying longing is, even if it's this co-designing of job duties, creating this perfect job for you. I have a, a thought coaching client who um, recently found a job that she, she loves and she's discovered that uh, one of the things that frustrated her was she didn't feel included when she first started at the job. And she's like, she, she told me in a session, you know, this is just, you know, feeling frustrating to me. I want to feel included. Why, why did they dismiss me? And I said, wow, it sounds like you have a gift for noticing that feeling when people feel excluded. So she contacted, she noticed that she started to notice that about herself. She contacted me a couple of weeks later and said, I, my boss told me, Hey, we've got this new hire. And uh, we, we know that you have a sensitivity to that. And we know that you want people to feel included. Would you mind having a conversation with her and having her be included? So when we talked, I said, wouldn't it be amazing if right now you were co-designing a new position that this company had never heard of before, that you were walking in this terrifying longing that belongs only to you. It is this thing that you can't help but do. And so now she's in the process of doing that. So you see, it doesn't have to be something that's already prepared for you. You can go into something that's prepared for you, but you always need to understand that whatever you're doing, whatever you're acting upon has to be aligned with that which you say you want. Otherwise, it's a waste of time.